my seatbelt. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's back in action and today I'm showing you guys how I built my turbo kit for my D150. Uh, obviously the turbo kit's not on it anymore, but here I am with a turbo kit sitting in my garage. Eventually it'll go back on the truck, just not yet. Over the next 12 months I'll be working on rebuilding a motor and a transmission and a rear diff for that D150 and I'm planning on putting this turbo kit back on. Uh, I definitely have to change up a couple things on it, which you'll see, but Overall, it should be fun when it goes back together. Here's the rundown. The exhaust headers are an, like a direct fit for a, like a quote unquote second gen Ram pickup, a half ton with a V8, you know, these are, and then uh, we cut the flanges off and welded on the V-band clamps. On the passenger side, you can see there's a weld going around that way. Uh, I had to just angle the, the flange in a different direction and then put a V-band on that as well. Holy smokes. I don't know if there's any bolts holding these cylinder heads on this engine. I didn't even look at that. Oh, whatever. If you're gonna do a single turbo, you have to collect the two pipes to one. So here's my collector pipe. This does not work if you have power steering. The power steering bracket sits right in front of this manifold. And then also for the alternator, I had to get a longer belt and then I extended. The, so the alternator sat up higher than where it normally would. Cause where the alternator would normally sit on a Pickup would have hit that flange. I did a really sweet pie cut right there. That's mint. All welded with MIG. <laughs> uh, half these pipes are stainless, half of them are not. So then we come up, I got this 90 degree elbow. That was like a T3 flange or T4, I can't remember. It's been too long. Um, and that already had a V band, two and a half inch V band. The T3 or T4. And then I cut a hole and welded on this one for the wastegate. Uh, the turbo is like a 60 something millimeter turbo, somewhere between 55 and 60 millimeters. The exhaust housings, uh, 0.7 AR. So then we go to the exhaust down. It's a two and a half inch V-band on here. Uh, one of my big flaws that I made with this kit is I made this a hard mount to the wastegate and uh, when I tack welded everything together, it lined up great and I burned everything in all the way around so it wouldn't leak. And then all of a sudden they don't line up anymore. So that was a big issue I had. Um, if I were to redo this, I would put a little flex joint in here. And as well, when I would rebuild this, uh, this turbo outlet would end up being a three inch or four inch even because this is way too much air for this little pipe. Wastegate worked all right once I got it figured out. Came with a 14 pound 14 pound spring in it, or there were no springs from this company to change out. So all I could do was 14 pounds with the little manual controllers. All that manual controller is, is it's an air leak. So your boost pressure goes to your controller. And then depending on what the controller is, is set at, it'll put that boost pressure to here. So a 14 pound spring means uh, you need 14 pounds of boost pressure to get past this. And then you can start making an air leak so not the full 14 pounds of boost actually gets to it so it'll stay closed longer so i needed a softer spring because i only wanted eight pounds so i ran eight pounds of boost through a bone stock 360 that's bone stock cam literally a factory cylinder head factory intake manifold the other things you need for a successful turbocharging system so you need to have oil pressure going to your turbo then you also need an oil drain outlet Ideally, you don't want a 5 8 inch fitting going into a less than a 3 8 inch barb and then going upwards into a valve cover. You definitely don't want that. And because of that, I ended up getting oil consumption coming through the turbocharger. Um, and it would get into this hat and it would actually get between the silicone boot and this nice aluminum hat and it would make a boost leak. Even that little bit of eight pounds of boost pressure would leak through the silicone. Uh, obviously I had a clamp on it at the time. I also welded on this blow off valve onto this aluminum thing with a MIG gun with uh, not the right gas. So that didn't turn out great. So that's why I put this little clamp and fiberglass over it. So you couldn't see that it wasn't great. I didn't know uh, fiberglass heat wrap. So first off, never install it with like bare hands or arms at all. 
Um, all this fiberglass will get in your arms and it'll make you feel like trash for at least a week. Uh, the other thing is on the collector pipes where they wide together and everything, all this fiberglass turned to glass, like it's all hard and brittle. Uh, so that's interesting. As you can hear, it's obviously sounds like glass floating around my floor and you can see how badly it cracked and fibered up. Just terrible. I'm never going to install this stuff again. Uh, there's got to be a better solution out there. I think this was stuff was cheap and I think there's a more expensive option that doesn't uh, do this. I ran into issues with the fuel injection system that I had. I think 99% of that was probably my issue. So I'm not ragging on them at all. I used the Phytech system. Uh, I ended up having RPM interference issues and I, I wired it with electrical like butt connectors, the crimp butt connectors and I didn't isolate the tack signal wire, which both of, which was a bad call on me. So I got upset one weekend, tore it all off, just put headers back on the truck. That was a really stupid move. Um, but here I am with a turbo kit sitting in my garage. Eventually it'll go back on the truck, just not yet, obviously. Uh, I lost the video where I explained that a turbo kit like this ends up with a lot of weight pressing on that collector pipe. So you got to have a support underneath the turbo to keep the pipes from uh, bending and cracking with that extreme heat. So one thing that I really messed up on with this kit was I did a mount as an afterthought. So I tried doing it while it was in the truck and I haggard welded it. It had a rubber bushing that just melted out the first time I drove it. So when you're building a turbo kit, Think about where you're going to mount the turbocharger bracket. Thanks for watching today's video on the Back in Action channel. This isn't normally what I like to do. I can't stand just talking to the camera. I always want to be doing something. Uh, but I've gotten asked so many times about how I built this kit, uh, you know, and how it all worked together, why I took it back off, stuff like that. So I really wanted to put this video out there. So you guys that keep asking me, you can see, and it's gonna go back on eventually. Just not yet. You gotta stay tuned to the channel and this kit will be going back in my D150 and it will be awesome.